Um, but on the issue of discipline, what I firmly believe is that if I'm elected in the first 100 days, I'm going to be just like Ms. Root and I have done on so many other issues. We're going to, I'm going to sit down with the commissioner and the top brass and reform this discipline system so we'll have checks and balances before 2018 season starts up. And because it's going to be, my guiding light is this, what's best for the game? So I've had people ask me, what about this? The owner's making a concession, the player's making concessions. I'm taking the word concessions out of the dialogue. And all we're going to be talking about is what's best for the game. What's best for the game is to reform that system. What's also best to the, for the game is to dramatically improve the resources, particularly at the club level, to deal with and minimize and prevent from happening some of these off-the-field issues. And I'm not talking about Elliot. I'm not commenting on that in particular. I'm just saying issues of, you know, DUIs, issues of uh, drug abuse, issues of uh, uh, domestic violence that have kept players from playing, and there are also mm -hmm. human tragedies that exist for that. So if we really redouble or triple the effort on that, and, and to me that's something – labor management should be on the same page on, which is prevention of problems. And that's the difference between me and the incumbent because the incumbent, his relationship is so poisonous mm -hmm. that they, and so contentious that they can't be problem solving. But problem solving is focusing on prevention of these issues. And so I particularly admire Jason Witten because he spoke up on the issues of domestic violence. Steve Smith did last year when he was a Raven. Uh, William Gay did on the Steelers. So the players that have stood up on these issues, um, you know, deserve admiration and deserve to be heard. One of my problems with the incumbent is that because he's a corporate lawyer, he has no idea how to fight for workers. And if you fight for workers, you do not put their fate in the hands of U.S. appellate courts because their track record is anti-worker, empirically. So just so you know, the data that, you know, just so we have some actual facts, when management wins a trial, the worker has an 8% chance of reversing that, okay? So you say, okay, well, that's deference to the fact finder. Well, when a worker wins a trial, mm -hmm. don't you think it should be 8% to be fair? You know, scales of justice, it's not 8%, it's not 16, it's not 20, it's not 30, it's between 40 and 45% reversal for trial victories for plaintiffs. That is shocking, that is a scandal, that is a system that is not fair for American workers, and someone, only someone using incredibly bad judgment would put the fate of NFL players in the hands of a system that is that hostile to American workers. And that's a big difference between me and the incumbent is I'm much more strategic because I represent workers for 25 years. So how do you get around the system? How do you Which, not put them in that system? You don't take it to court? or What, what, is the what I'm saying is we're going to reform the system so it has a neutral aspect to it. It has an independent aspect. You can have an independent investigator. You can have an independent first decision maker. You can have an independent appellate person. There's a lot of different ways you can make it independent and have checks and balances. The system doesn't work when you have zero checks and balances, mm -hmm. right? That's the problem we have right now.